My name's John Cooper. I'm Chair of Biomedical Engineering. I hold the Wolfson Chair and we're particularly interested at the University in Glasgow in looking at developing world diagnostics. And over the last three to four years we've been looking at the way in which sound and light can be used to uh, enrich and perhaps even sense the very low numbers of infectious agents that we need to be able to find in samples. And the realistic signal to noise of this is of the order of sometimes as high as one in a hundred million. So we're trying to find one cell which might be a parasitic cell sitting amongst a, uh, a cocktail of other cells which would most typically be blood cells and as I say there may be up to a hundred million other cells. So we, we, we use two basic techniques in which to attempt to do this and one of them involves using photonics and the other involves using phononics and in fact the two are related to each other in so much as what we try to do in both cases is to shape the field of the forces which act upon those cells in order to differentially separate one type of cell from a different type of cell. So the, the first aspect of what we're trying to do is to shape sound waves and those sound waves are created at surface acoustic wave devices and we use a phononic crystal and by analogy with a photonic crystal these are arrays of materials which instead of relying upon a difference in refractive index rely upon a difference in the Young's modulus of the material. So we can, we can model and then make particular structures which can actually be made in materials as cheap as glass or paper which when the surface acoustic wave front uh, enters into that crystal array is modified in order to create a, a new phenomena. And the kinds of phenomena that we've been interested in looking at are, for example, being able to heat up the sample and we, we focus, we make a, a, a graded index lens for the acoustic wave which means that we can focus the acoustic wave into a sample and as a result of that we can heat it up and enable uh, a, a simple uh, biochemical reaction to take place which is used commonly in analysis called uh, uh, polymerase chain reaction and as a consequence of that we are able to uh, identify the nature of microorganisms which exist within the, the, the blood sample. So the second aspect of the work which we're looking at is involved in photonics and uh, it's quite separate. The, 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 the techniques, the physics of what we're doing is quite separate from what we're doing with phenomics and involves a phenomena that uh, was actually first discovered here in, in uh, San Francisco in Berkeley by Ming Wu and he used a uh, technique where he shone light onto a photoconductor and was able to pattern electric fields and we've been able to build upon his work and use these electric fields in order to look at the differential movement of cells and so cells are largely non-conducting particles and uh, when they're placed in a a non-uniform electric field, they will become polarized and they will move relative to that electric field. And the rate at which they move and how they move is dependent upon the nature of the cell itself. In the case of uh, sleeping sickness, we might be looking to find uh, one protosome parasite in a drop of blood. So that would be amongst tens of millions of cells. And using these light generated fields, what we're able to do is to create an environment in which the blood cells move in one direction and the parasites move in the other direction. Not only that, we can change the environment. So in fact, the blood cells are completely removed. And this very quickly gives us a way in which we can screen for the, for, for the parasite. We're now beginning to develop devices where we're combining both the acoustic and the photonic effects together and we're able to uh, enter a whole new way of looking at biological entities. 
So the sound tells us something about the mechanical properties of the cell and the, the light or the, the induced electric fields from the light tell us something about the, the charge properties of the cell. So we can then start to look at the ability to separate all sorts of cells on a combination of both their mechanical and their electrical properties. And of course cells have different mechanical and different electrical properties. So this gives us a, a greater freedom of, uh, of, of separation in cells. And so we hope that that is going to be an interesting way to look forward in the future.